We've built a 165 horsepower Kit Fox Beast. But what if you can get a similar power to weight ratio for less than a quarter of the cost? We are about to stall and this is our adventures in and around South Africa. Hey, I'm Carl and this is our Mini Me build. It's an Avid Flyer Mark IV with heavy hollow wings, an aircraft very similar to the Kit Fox 4. In fact, the early Kit Fox was a direct copy of the Avid Flyer designed by Dean Wilson. We bought this aircraft in 2020 and it came with a Rotax 582 engine, putting out about 65 horsepower. But with our South African summer having density altitude of 7,000 feet and above daily, she was severely underpowered, especially with two up and fuel on board. The final nail in the coffin was when an engine seizure put her in a cornfield on the 31st of December 2020. What a way to end 2020. So it was time for an upgrade. And this was the perfect opportunity to show how you can build a high performing budget bush plane with similar performance to our Edge Fox. <laughs> We reached out to our friends at Edge Performance and they were happy to help us out with a completely rebuilt Rotax 912 ULS. Our goal here is to go for power to weight ratio. This means keep the aircraft's weight as low as possible with a 100 horsepower engine to match the Edge Fox's power to weight ratio for less than a quarter of the cost. It was then time to get the ball rolling. A few things made this project really interesting. The Avid Aircraft Factory is no longer in business. There is a guy who bought the rights to it and he is offering parts but no full kits yet. This means that the Avid community is a very active DIY community because getting parts and in our case a 912 engine mount is really difficult and expensive. Especially for us here in South Africa who has to deal with outrageously expensive shipping costs from the US. So the plan was to design our own engine mount. The reason for this is that the original Avid aircraft engine mount for the 912 is similar to the Kit Fox 4 Dynafocal engine mount. And neither I nor our AP John Herbert, who built the Edge Fox, is a fan of this engine mount due to its mediocre vibration reduction compared to the Kit Fox 5 onwards engine mounts. Initially, we looked at making use of the Rotax ring mount. But the Avid has a really limited space in the cowling and extending the cowling was not an option because that would put our CG way out of the range on the forward side. We then looked to the Eurofox and I designed an engine mount inspired by their idea of putting the rubber isolators on the firewall side instead of near the engine while also keeping the engine as close as possible to the firewall. With this design finalized, our friend Yaku, who's a certified aircraft welder, got to work cutting and welding the new engine mount. In the meantime, the instrument panel needed to be redone because none of the 582 instruments were going to work with the 912. The plan was to go for an EFA a solution that weighs less than the steam gauges and modernizes the setup while also putting all the information in one place right in front of the pilot. We were looking at all the different options, especially the more affordable ones, when Level Aviation reached out to us to test their iLevel 3 AW unit. We realized that this perfectly fits our mini-me project goal of modern and affordable while keeping the weight down. So while the engine mount was being built, we removed all the old wiring and hoses and made a new instrument panel. Of course, engine power alone cannot do anything without a prop to convert it to thrust. So we started looking at a few options. We're looking for a prop that offers great takeoff performance while not skimping on cruise performance. But the real catch is that it needs to be light to keep the CG in check. One of the most affordable variable pitch props are the Ivo props, so we initially looked at one of those. But in my research, I came across the EPROPS propeller and started reading into all their research. What they claimed was that their full carbon fiber ground adjustable prop that only weighs two and a half kilos fully assembled performed just as well, or in some cases even better than some variable pitch propellers. The South African dealer for EPROPS, a friend of ours down in East London, Savannah Aircraft, 
So we reached out to them to find out what they think about the prop. They promptly informed me that they have completely switched over to the EPROP and can highly recommend it. So they sent us one to test out and compare to the IVOPROP that a friend has on his Explorer. I'll link the test flight video in the cards and in the description once it's uploaded. And I highly recommend that you click subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when that happens. What I can say about the prop is that we were really impressed. With the engine installed, instrument panel redone, and the 40mm extension that we had to make to the cowling finished, it was time to purge the oil and then time for the very first start. After some ground runs and taxi tests, the installation was inspected and signed out. And then Dale Leclerc came over to do the first test flight. The whole project took about 9 months to complete, so you can imagine the emotions when she took flight for the very first time. Now, what we've all been waiting for, let's talk numbers. With the Rotex 582, the Avid weighed 260 kilograms empty. The CG with pilot and 50 liters of fuel was around the 30% range. And with the warp drive pitched between climb and cruise, the climb performance was about 500 feet per minute. And with a passenger, it dropped to around 300 feet a minute. The cruise speed at that pitch setting was around 80 miles per hour indicated. The new M2 weight is 285 kilos, about 25 kilograms heavier. The CG, with a single pilot and 50 liters of fuel, is at the 27% range, so definitely a bit further forward. Mind you, this is with no weights in the tail. With the EPROPs pitched according to their recommendations, the new performance numbers are as follows. The climb rate went up to 1,500 feet per minute single and around 1,000 feet per minute dual, meaning with a passenger. The cruise speed went up to 100 miles per hour indicated or 112 miles per hour true airspeed. I'm sure you can agree this is a massive improvement, especially considering that the total cost after buying the plane and doing the upgrade was around 30,000 US dollars, or less than a quarter of the cost of the Edge Fox for close to the same power to weight ratio. Of course, the Edge Fox is turbocharged and this one is not. So the power to weight ratio is not quite the same at this density altitude. Nevertheless, taking the performance numbers into account, I think she's worthy of being called the Edge Fox's mini me. Comment below if you agree. There's still a bit of experimenting left because we have not yet installed any Vortex generators and we'll be doing the same level of research on the subject as when we got a 7 knot improvement with the Edge Fox. Before the upgrade, the stall at 7000 feet density altitude was about 35 miles per hour indicated and it's now around 40 miles per hour. Keep in mind that this is without VGs and with the CG on the forward side. So we expect a much better stall speed with our VGs and a shift in the CG. If you enjoyed this build video, please let us know in the comments below and by liking the video. Subscribe if you're curious about the propeller test flight and the EFIS review and want to be the first to know when those videos are released. Lastly, you guys helped us name the Edge Fox, so if you have an idea to name the Abbott, please comment below. We're really curious to see what you come up with. Until next time, dream big, fly high, and live the adventure.